Hello everybody and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. And today we will be discussing a long-awaited favourite, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Black. Yeah. Yes, yes, I wasn't sure. For a second I thought it was Blake. <laughs> anyway, by Holly Black. The Folk of the Air series, number one. Woohoo! Ready to rip into it. Alright, I will start with the blurb. Of course I want to be like them. They're beautiful as blades forged in some divine fire, and Carden is even more beautiful than the rest. I hate him so much that sometimes when I look at him I can hardly breathe. Sorry. (laughs) One terrible morning, Jude and her sisters see their parents murdered in front of them. The fearsome assassin abducts all three girls and brings them to the world of fairy. Mocked and tormented for being merely mortal, Jude soon realises... Mocked and tormented for being merely mortal, Jude soon realises that to survive in the treacherous, dangerous world of the royal court, she needs to be as cunning and deceitful as the Fae themselves. But the stairway to power is fraught with shadows and betrayal, and looming over all is arrogant and charismatic Prince Carden. Ooh, I love that. That differs so greatly to the Goodreads description. Oh, really? I didn't even look at the Goodreads description this time. That's okay. I suppose, yeah... In the era of Kindles, like, we hardly get a blurb these days. <laughs> I like going in blind. Yeah. <laughs> as God intended. As it should be done. I, I love how they described... Alright, I'm going to say... M- M- Madoc? Maddock? Maddock as an assassin. And, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, technically he did murder. But, like, is he an assassin assassin of sorts? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that was funny. Already thoughts, feelings, and emotions, Kenzie. Um, I like this book. I went in with it being recommended through like TikTok and like it's a book talk book, and it's smutty and blah blah blah, which it's not. So first of all, I was heavily misled. Misled. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, it's very much YA, and I'm sure I would have absolutely inhaled it and loved it when I was sixteen. Um, Not that I didn't love it. I did enjoy it. It was a nice palate cleanser, if you will. Um, But, yeah, I was just waiting for, like, a little bit more saucy stuff, a little bit more uh, brutality, I guess, in terms of some things. Um, Well, just, like, to bring it up to that, like, new adult level. Um, But, yeah, no, it was still good. I liked the twists and turns. It's a small book, but it felt like it had a lot of story in it. Yeah, for sure. Every page counted almost. There was always new information mm. to be learned and great inner monologues and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, none of this final hundred pages bullshit. No, no. It, it's appropriately structured. Yeah. One would say. Alrighty, my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Yeah, I would say, I would wholeheartedly agree that it was a, a nice palate cleanser as well. Because I smashed out like 80% of it in one day in one sitting so so yeah I was really immersed into it the YA aspect uh, didn't bother me as much it was just quite refreshing because of all the other sort of books we've been reading they're all it's all been very crude and um even at times like aggressive and stuff so it was just a nice little refreshing read um Mm. Obviously, there are some aspects that we're going to probably talk about later that were incredibly, yeah, YA and juvenile, which yeah seems a bit, huh? But I still enjoyed it at the end of the day, and I am, yeah, halfway through, like, the second book right now, so smashing it out, thoroughly enjoying it. And yeah, this was very popular amongst our Akatar reading yes. era as well. Yes. So it was also, yeah, very highly recommended and stuff. And so far, I think it's living up to it. I think it's... It's very concise, um, and I keep seeing a lot of like the relationship between Jude and Carden on the interwebs and stuff. So, be interesting to finally read those moments. Yeah, I think as well because I had seen so much like TikTok art and stuff about their like relationship and stuff. I was expecting yeah, like a little bit more. But what are you gonna do? Carden didn't even seem like a main character in this book until like yeah the back end when he was needed for the leverage but yeah I found that yeah quite refreshing though because it's really about Jude's story and her rise to power but yeah enjoyed it enjoying the series so far 
Looking forward to finishing it. Alrighty, what do we want to do first? Do we want to... I don't know, I want to gush about Jude real quick. <laughs> just, just her character. I don't know, she's ruthless and ambitious and I love it. <laughs> In a weird way, because she is not like biologically Maddox's daughter, like he is her daughter as well, you know, being trained in that general sense and then her besting him in his own strategies. It's just mwah, chef's kiss. Loved it. Yeah, I just love her protection with her sisters as well. Like, ah, oh. she's definitely that, yeah, the YA heroine. Yeah. Like, don't get caught up with men or anything. Like, just forge your own path. Yeah, she's doing it for the safety of her mortality, I guess, being a human or mortal and trying to protect her, her sister Taryn in the process as well. Um, yeah. Not not to discredit Vivian, but she's of this world. But nah, Jude, fighting, standing up against her bullies, and I think we'll touch more on the whole like bullying, victimization, all that type of shit as well later. Uh huh. Again, again, because it's just juvenile. Do we want to talk about it quickly? We can gush about Jude all day. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> But do we also want to touch on her being a fucking idiot? Hear me How out. is she? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when she accepts the uh, oh, yeah. chance to be a spy for Dane. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and he's like, yeah, like, I'll give you this protection. No one can glamour you except for me. And she's like, okay. But it's just her, the, the bright eyes for, like, power and the ability to not be glamoured again like she, she it's, it's worth it more i guess mm. the risk the risks outweighed each other for what she wanted but yeah it was pretty yeah i thought dane was pretty sussy wussy when he decided to be like and one more thing you are not allowed to tell anybody about this it's like yeah that's a red flag yeah but obviously he wants to keep his situation at bay in general but yeah but yeah it was pretty stupid but if you think about it yeah 17 year old human what's she to do she just wants to protect herself against yeah. all the fairies or the fae yeah and she wants to like it's very it felt like a very game of thronesy in that you're, yeah you're all just trying to play this game and win yeah yeah i really enjoyed this whole the political conflict and political yep. confrontations not that i really cared that it all led to oak in in the end essentially but i suppose he's gonna play more of a part later on i could be wrong but this is just me generalizing right now as from what i've read but yeah yeah very a lot yeah game of thrones style just everyone's killing each other fantastic i loved it didn't expect the whole family to just go kaput essentially i know in one fell swoop <laughs> i know she's like yeah because no one wanted to uh bestow the crown upon um, it felt very much like the the Knight of the Right <laughs> in Ooh. From Blood and Ash. <laughs> ah, right, right, right. When right, everyone's right. just taken out all in one fell swoop. <laughs> oh, yep, yep, towards the end, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I remember I was telling you, I was like, there's too many characters. And then a couple of chapters later, half the family's gone. It's like, well, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's name like, us to well, remember. <laughs> yep, silly deal. I mean, I don't know. She's, yeah, ambitious what was it circle of shadow court of shadows court of shadows yeah i liked the little also like montages of her work training with Matic and then doing the court of shadow stuff on the side yeah yeah with the ghost the bomb and roach <laughs> who i just imagined as like little rodents but <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're all like yeah obviously different species of beings and stuff. yeah yeah nah. crazy crazy Alrighty. Any qualms? I think as we get to them, I'll talk about them. Okay. Because, yeah, there was one, uh, two minor aspects of the storyline that I didn't care for or I absolutely hated. Go on, my child. Happy to dip <laughs> into it now. Yes, we're waiting for your yeah. permission. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just the whole Locke wanting to marry Taryn but use this whole test of love. So, and then oh, he could yeah. court Jude. It's like... I didn't understand it. I didn't like it. Because, yeah, it just seemed like, yeah, really, like, juvenile, like... And Taryn just going along with it, like, yeah, oh, yeah, let's trick Jude, like, into thinking that you like her because you actually want to marry me. 
yeah it's just yeah it's just so bizarre and i felt like yeah. it was unnecessary it was just to drive a wedge between taryn and jude which is which isn't very feminist of holly black <laughs> we're, surely we're past these dainty love triangles because we learn Locke is all about, you know, wanting to create s- stories of life, I guess. And he's interested in what Jude was going to do. But I just realized it's because he's, his parents are gone and he's just bored. A yeah. bored, Im- Im- immortal kid. I think, yeah, a lot of it. And I think, I don't, not in this, I don't know if it's this one or like the next one or whatever. But essentially, yeah, he, he says like, oh, like, yeah, I'm bored. Like, I just want to play a game. Like. Mm. And that's the thing with with this type of world and these fairies and stuff, yeah. fae folk, a lot of their um, ind- uh, indiscretions and stuff are set to be games, quote unquote mm. games, or if it's a trick. What did I just watch? I just watched. Mm, I just watched a movie or something. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a book. We might have discussed it, but it was about how like. <laughs> Oh, it might have been in a fantasy world or something. Oh my god, what was it? But it was about how... Oh, it was Blood and Ash prequels. Okay. And it was about how... Yeah, like, so the... um, The, 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 the... The gods were put on the earth and then they made the... The humans or whatever. And then the humans started to experience emotion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the gods were just like, what? And then, yeah... Fucked him over, yeah. Yeah, so it feels like that. Like, these humans come in and, like, experience life differently to, like, the way that the Fae do. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so then they just like to play little games against them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Fair enough. Because I guess it's un- um, unpredictable as well. Mm, it's like science it, for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a little microscope. And that's the thing, too. When I first started this book, all I had ever known about it on the internet is just, it's a fantasy, you know, it's Fae creatures and... All that type of stuff. You got goblins and hobs and all other sorts of animalistic fake creatures. And then the first chapter, it's like we're watching TV. The car pulls into the driveway, and I'm like, "What yeah. the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. I thought the book I bought was like duped or something, or if it was like a <laughs> fake, because I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" But yeah, it seems like yeah, the mortal world and the f- and uh, Elfheim, I think that's how mm. you say it, is mm-hmm. just like side by side essentially via portals and stuff but still yeah i think it's crazy one of the qualms that i have as well with books like this like i feel like crescent city does it really well in that it's the modern world like integrated into this like fantasy realm or whatever like they have magic and creatures and like swords and stuff but then they also have like guns and cars and computers and stuff like i think that's done really well i like i find it really difficult in these books where there's yeah like a stark contrast between the uh quote real world and then the fantasy world because and then the person always chooses to go and live in the fantasy world stuff because like there's magic and it's stuff but it's like okay but you could also have an iphone like (laughs) yeah yeah and then i think yeah, like, one of the things that we keep coming across is, like, they can explicitly name, like, the Apple Store, yeah, but then, Starbucks. like, you can't name Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, we love the product placement or perhaps... Yeah, and it's like, where on. is the line or, like, who are you paying or, like, what do you need to pay to do this name yeah. drop these products? I suppose maybe even it's just free, potentially free publicity for them anyway. Yeah. I know, like, it might be one of those things that, like, um, Apple... Like, will let you use their phones in movies, but the bad guy isn't allowed to have yep, an Apple. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, so that's I've like a that. trick, yeah, for like how you always know, like, yeah, who the villain, who are. the bad guy is. <laughs> Although sometimes I think now they have to like probably cover up because everyone knows that little trick, I guess now. So like, you got to make it like a blanket cell phone to make sure no one knows. Yeah, a jarring thing. But then, oh, now that I just think about it because Jude was all like because Vivian wanted them to come back with her to the mortal world because she wants to live there out of spite for Maddox for murdering their parents fair enough yeah. you know she, she she just lives out of spite against him which yeah. we love that but then Jude would be like oh I wouldn't know how to live in the mortal world anymore because you know she's good with swords and shit and it's like go work at a rent fair 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like you've assimilated well into like the into Fairyland. I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard to assimilate back into the yeah. world, considering how young she's, she is. Yeah. Also, should we just touch on like, so there's Vivian, Tarot, and Jude. Tarot and Jude are twins, twin sisters, and then Vivian is their sister, but Vivian was a product of an affair, so she's like half magic. Actually, I think it's the other way around. Tarot and Jude were. Yeah. No, because Vivian's the reason he took them. Because he just wanted to go and get Vivian. Because, like, that's his... Why would he want the mortals? <laughs> no, no, you, you said Vivian was part of the... Like, the, made up of an affair. And it's the other way around. Taryn and Judah. But they would have magic then. No, no, no. All right, so, 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 so Viv- their mum, I forget her name, and yeah. Maddox equals yeah. Vivian. Biological. And then the humans, what's his name? Justin. Yeah. And their mum equals Taryn and... Yeah, so I said Vivian was a product of an affair. No, the other two are products of affairs. <laughs> it's the other way around. Because, <laughs> yeah, Maddox was going for, Vivi- going for Vivian because that's a, his biological daughter. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. Like, Okay, yeah, sorry. All like, right. she was with the human and, like, she had Vivian with the fairy man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ta- yeah, Taryn and Judah with the human and then, yeah, he's the fairy. Vivian's yes. with the fairy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've just... <laughs> Awkward sentencing, I guess. Jude so. and Taryn would be the product of this affair. Well, I'm saying it. <laughs> from, you, I'm you, saying it from Maddox's point of view. From Maddox's <laughs> point of view, you don't. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh wait. Oh, I mean, okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, fuck those other kids. But he's an honourable man, and that's why he took them anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so he took them all to raise. Allegedly, them. very weirdly moral person Maddox yeah. is. Well, he's like, can't leave them with dead parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah. the irony of being a ruthless yeah. person, and yeah. And then in Elfheim, they have a half brother, Oak, who turns out to not really be their half brother anyway. Yeah, because he's also the product of an affair. <laughs> yeah, we love the common theme here, and this is there's a YA first, book. Yeah, there's a first left, right, and center. Yeah, funny, love it. So yeah, that's that family dynamic. It's fun. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we get there eventually. I suppose we can just dig into a bit of the plot, I guess. Yes. And then we can, like, venture off as we go. Um, so, yeah, pretty much beginning of the book, Maddox arrives, kills Jude's mum and dad, as well as, well as Vivian's and Taryn's, I guess, uh-huh. because she escaped from him. Uh, the mum escaped from Maddox. I think we are yet to really know why, at least I do. Um, but he found them in the mortal world and he's t- killed them and taken the kids back. To raise them yes. as his own. Love that. Yes. I wonder what like all the other fairy people were thinking, like when he just comes back with like these three kids. <laughs> it's like, what the hell happened? Yeah. yeah. What went wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be weird because it's like the general, just chilling next minute. He has a whole mansion, and yeah, his servants would have been so confused. He's also um, like a, what a general for the king, or yeah, hi- yeah, high king general. Yeah. So, he's so politically up there. He is, and it's in his nature to, like, thirst for battles and war and stuff. He's a very yeah. war-heavy type of person. It's what he craves. It's his purpose in life, I think, is a way yes. to describe him. So he's all about that. And, yeah, so he's as he's raising the girls, he is training them up as well and also just training them up to assimilate into the society. But Vivian is giving him shit out of spite. Because he killed her mum, which is fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and she just yearns to go back to the mortal world. Yeah. But also because Heather's there. Her girlfriend, yeah. Who she hasn't told her about being Fae or yeah. Fairyland or Elfheim in general. Which is crazy. Yes. So I guess present time, there is a tournament coming up, which was like a summer tournament it's like a mock war that's at least one of the first motivations jude has to compete yeah, it's for in the school children yeah they get to compete in war imagine capture the flag <laughs> <laughs> insane everyone's with their swords yes why didn't they just sneak a gun out of the mortal world into this place i mean just yeah brrr. and also yeah they're training swords aren't they they're not real swords yeah yeah yeah, yeah very so fun can't actually kill each other <laughs> no but even before that, we get montages of them going to school and there's this school posse that Carden hangs out with. Yeah, so there's Carden, 
I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> there is um, Cardin Narcissa, I think, who I just think of like Draco's mum from Harry Ooh, Potter. Oh, yeah. Locke. <laughs> and Locke. Anyway, and this is like one of my qualms. And Valerian or Valerian or however you want to say his name. Oh, yeah. One of my qualms I have is that like they bully Jude and Taryn for being human. Um, and then they nearly kill them. Like yep, they drown them. <laughs> yep, yep. Or send or put them in that river filled with those creatures who would like eat them or kill them anyway. Yeah, and that's like I understand your prince, but like surely there are repercussions for like nearly killing someone. I suppose this is that underlying like the like <laughs> I don't know ethnicity superiority or species superiority yeah. type of thing as well of more uh, humans are less than because you know yeah. they can be glamoured and essentially be enslaved and I think yeah and it's primarily just because Jude is sticking it to the man because she doesn't want to be bullied because um yeah they've all just been bullied growing up yeah strictly for being mortal um and she yeah so she yearns to try and have a powerful status in order to be free of that sort of lifestyle yeah and but like just uh, talk to Maddox and he would kill yeah. Cardin at the end <laughs> yeah there's also um like fairy fruit or whatever and like humans shouldn't eat it because it's like fairy wine in Akatar. like it makes you really intoxicated and like not yourself and high and blah blah and they like trick her into eating some and yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not a fun she, like, time. She gets naked or something. I don't know. Yeah, at some point, I think. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, very intense <sighs> bullying. Again, if for like a YA book, it's like, whoa, okay. And then in the end, we inevitably, like, look, I may not have finished reading the series, but off the social medias and stuff, like, Jude and Carden probably end up together. Yeah. So, like, to go from that bullying to like the victim and the bully coming together like it seems a bit far-fetched but i'm sure they go on a nice emotional journey together and maybe perhaps (laughs) it'll be forgiven i don't know sure but (laughs) but yeah initially it's um yeah it seems pretty weird how that pairing would become apparent yeah also carlin has a tail (laughs) yep yep like a lion tail which is brought up like once and that's oh, it. <laughs> we can quickly talk about like his family and like the meaning behind that tale because okay. let me just find my so there's King Eldred and then he's got his six heirs his children and they all have an animalistic quality to be I think it's like strictly a deer or a stag quality Yeah, like it could be like hooves it could be um, ant- horns or antlers. antlers or whatever could be a tail, could be perhaps like a face of a stag or whatever, whatever it is. Rip to whoever got the face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if, if that's actual apparent, but whatever. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're the house of um, Greenbrier. What a yeah. name. I know, I love that. And back in the lore, there was this person called Queen Mab, which Mab reminds me of. A f- Throne of Glass. Yeah, I could talk. Oh, Throne of Glass, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this guy forged a a crown that could only be sat on the head of the Greenbrier line. And a sibling or someone with that blood can, you know, appoint the the crown on someone relative's head or whatever. Yes. Unless the entire line is sealated. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why they have a shit ton of kids to secure that line, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, and so Cardin has, like, five other siblings who are, like, in various ages and stages in life. And so that's his family dynamic. He seems to... He's, yeah, the youngest... Oh, well, technically, Oak is half. But Cardin... Oh, we don't know that yet. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) So that's his family dynamic. Um, Yeah, there's Dane and then there's... I don't know who's the oldest or whatever, but you got Dane. I think they mentioned them briefly, but yeah. Yeah, there's a few of them. They're kind of, like... Irrelevant to the main, yeah to like the until they story, die so yeah <laughs> they're irrelevant until they die so yeah Cardin yeah is a prince um what's the N- Nacassia Narcissia whatever <sighs> she's also yeah. a princess technically of sorts she's from yes. a, another court court of the undersea yeah or whatever. She's, yeah I was gonna say she's like mer people yeah 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 
Oh, that's giving me a little mermaid vibes. <laughs> Is it though? She's a murderous <laughs> uh, bully. <laughs> yeah. Well, aren't they all? And then, yeah, Valerian or Valerian or whoever, yeah, he's just a fuckwit. I hate him. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> so, yeah, the early montages of them bullying Jude and Taryn and Jude sticking up for herself and Jude yeah. fighting back. And then also, not to like mention, it. like, still, like, during this whole time, like, Taryn and Locke are secretly together and he's just, like, letting this happen. <laughs> and then, yeah, there would be moments where he would sneak away to talk to – or not sneak away, but he'd talk to Jude in private and then that's when they decided – sort of develop their little side relationship yeah you know what i thought there was nothing ill intent behind that notion i thought you know what <laughs> get you a nice fey man fey boy well yeah and then because i have was some also fun like, because i knew that card and then jude ended up together i was like oh okay it's just another one of the like it's never the first love interest like situations. oh yeah yeah yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah yeah but also i think there's like a juvenile Sort of other love triangle between Cardin, what Na Narcassia, Narcissia, and yeah, because and she anyway. yeah, feels like uh, entitled to Cardin because she is a princess. But then Locke stole her, quote unquote stole her. I would never yeah. use the word stole in terms <laughs> of like a girlfriend or boyfriend. Yeah. Jeez. So yeah, that shows the level of maturity is within this book. Yes. But we love it. We love it. Anyway, Cardin is finding out ways to like decimate Jude in any possible way because yeah she keeps standing up for herself. Uh, God forbid you come across a confident woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know we're gonna bring it up later, but I'm gonna bring it up now just because okay. <laughs> I'll probably forget about it. Because Cardin's being abused at home, he's taking it out <laughs> well he's not taking it out strictly on Jude, but it seems one of those things where like he's being like abused and bullied at home and he's taking it out on other people as well or using it or still being a bully against other people for no real reason is just shit behavior yes and yeah i hated that but then it's yeah i suppose being a ya book like no one's thinking about it too critically you know other than us i guess but yeah that just that aspect sucked a little bit also just another motivation throughout this book is jude wants to become a knight again she is reaching for status and power and she needs, like, Maddox's approval for that. Yes. Uh, he, and he declines because yeah, he's he, like, doesn't, no. <laughs> he doesn't think she is capable yet. I think it was implied that she hasn't killed anyone or there was an implication where you might not have the stomach to kill people, therefore I'm not going to accommodate, yeah. recommend you. So anyway, she's shitty about that, as she should. Summer tournament comes around, the mock war. She fights and wins her team. Yeah. But Maddox isn't there because she's trying to impress him. Yeah. But then, like, I suppose, oh, there was this other thing. You could be selected to be, like, I don't know, a guard for, like, one of the royals and stuff. I completely forget what that reasoning is. But anyway, I think in the mock war, Dane is what notices her and then decides to then do his whole be a part of my court of shadows because she can lie yeah because humans can because fairies can't lie oh yeah prince and princesses can elevate someone to knighthood so if maddox said no she was hoping she'd catch the attention of the other prince and princesses i mean she did get the attention of of dane but yeah obviously for a different reason yeah so yeah then we come across like we were talking about uh before how dane offers jude uh, opportunity to be a spy um, and then he's like well I'll give you uh, immunity to any glamour except for mine if you accept because word is coming about that Eldred is going to abdicate his throne and there are reason to believe like there's a contest between the siblings I guess of who's going to be picked yeah um, and so yeah they're all trying to look out for each other and another reason why Dane picked picked Jude because she can lie and she can she's immortal she can, like, sneak her way into, like, sibling places and figure stuff out and steal for him. Yes. So now comes, like, the plot, I guess. Um, the real meat. Whole... I thought yeah. the summer tournament was going to be the meat, to be honest, because it's, <laughs> it's giving Hunger Games, it's giving Throne of Glass, it's giving everything leads up to this tournament. Is it giving when you thought the open day in Spanish Love Deception was going to be the plot? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it had to be. It was the only option. <laughs> Um, anyway, and so, yeah, so Jude discovers um, 
like secret letters and between like the queen of the undersea and what's her uh, how, how do you say her name orla <laughs> orla yeah um and nikasia's mother um implying that balkan will poison dane um she also sees balkan like beat up Carden. yeah when she sneaks in yeah when because he, he refuses to kill a human servant yep so she starts to be a little bit like oh this is where you start to feel sorry for him a little bit. I think she liked the fact that he was powerless in that state as well. Oh, hot, yeah. <laughs> hey, we know how um, much torture turns you on, all right? Yeah. And then um, Jude starts uh, partaking in mithridatism. I'm yeah, probably saying like that, that wrong. But it is the act of making one immune to poison by uh like administrating small amounts at a time to yourself so that your body like becomes used to it yeah so she is constantly in discomfort and like pain and all that stuff just because she is yeah building up that immunity valerian discovers that jude is resistant to glamours and he tries to kill her for this but she kills him or she stabs him yeah and she buries him on the estate maddox estate yes I'm halfway through the second book now and no one's brought him up. And it is so funny. No one really gives a shit about this guy. No yeah. one cares. Um, and then Locke invites Jude to a party at his house and gives her a dress that used to belong to his mother. Weird. Um, <laughs> and then she discovers like a little ornament, like a golden acorn in the pocket. And that tells her about his mother's death by like poisonous mushrooms yeah because she was poisoned unfortunately yeah and she's like oh i think i misinterpreted the other letter (laughs) yeah i was gonna say this is kind of relevant in the space i really didn't like the whole though it was important to identify oak's lineage or parent parentage or whatever yeah paternity maternity i didn't really like that the the figuring it out process yeah. i just didn't really care because yeah jude would be like oh if, if if i misinterpreted the letter from all that's a belkin that means this means xyz or this means this and it's like i respectfully don't care yeah oh another thing i was gonna say before there's a prophecy surrounding dane oh yes this is what i love slash hate <laughs> about these fantasy books you have fey creatures, magical creatures. You have just magic, glamour, funky fruit that gets you get humans high. You can enslave humans essentially, but not. Be- but prophecies is the hill they're gonna die on in not believing. <laughs> Although Dane actually, I think believed this because he, he's like, so long as I he has a brother or something, or he has a son or something, he will never be king, which ended up being true. But yeah, it's it's crazy, like. Prophecy is the hill they're going to die on that they're not going to believe in. Happened in From Blood and Ash as well. We don't believe in prophecies. You're in a world full of magic, my guy. Relax. (laughs) But yeah. Yeah, figuring out who's who and who Oak's mother is and stuff, I didn't care about. But then again, it had to be established for him to be as part of the Briar line. Briar wood line, whatever. Green Briar. There we go. (laughs) <laughs> this is how I, I did enjoy the book i swear so then there's some nitty gritty like stuff like just plot stuff just not really quarter, sh- quarter shadow stuff and yeah we officially meet the ghost the roach and the bomb the ghost yeah. is just like a missile assassin yeah. person the roach is a thief and the bomb reminds me of tiny tina in uh, borderlands explosives <laughs> i don't play it but I can understand it. Side of thievery as well. Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be the coronation because what's his face is stepping down as king. Yeah. And the rumor is Dane is going to be picked, which was correct. Yeah. So, and before the coronation, Maddox gives Jude a sword that was far forged by her biological father because he made swords. Good on him. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. It was pretty weird how, yeah, they were talking about old mate Justin and him bouncing back and forth between the mortal world and the human world. You know, trying to hone in on his craft, and apparently he was arrogant about it, and that's why he got a, kind of got chased out of yeah. Fairyland or Elfheim. Yeah, it's just 
And yet there are people like Heather, yeah, who know nothing of this world exists. It's like, surely. And like, even in the second book where I'm up to, like, people sneak into the mortal world all the time to s snag humans and shit. Like, surely, I suppose maybe humans don't necessarily have the power to get to Elfheim, but the Fae do to the mortal world. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But no, it's, it's crazy. Oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> it's just crazy that one half has all the power here. Um, so at the coronation, a la the right, um, everything goes down. The entire royal family, except for Cardin, is killed because Cardin hides under a table with Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, fair. Yeah, like. that's fair. Oh, actually, he was drunk. He was he disappeared, yeah, for a, yeah. a good while while everyone was dying. Because, yeah, Eldred declared Dane to be his uh, the next king and Belkin was like, fuck no. He yeah. murdered Dane outright. And then he's like, Eldred, uh, coronate me. And Eldred's like, fuck you, goodbye. And then his sisters just, like, killed themselves because yeah. they didn't want to do it either. And at this point, Jude knew that Oak was very important and she had a plan to make, make sure he was in the mortal world while this happened, for the time being. So Jude and Cardin escape to the Court of Shadows headquarters and she holds him captive. Oh, she, yeah, she, yeah, I love this. Yeah. Though. It was so yeah. good. And yeah, so boss. this is, yeah, Cardin tells uh, Jude, the Roach and the Ghost that Dane killed a child he had with Eldred's consort. He did so because of a prophecy saying if he had a child, he would never be king. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, he fucked with Eldred's consort. <laughs> yeah. Which ended up being Locke's mother. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's why she got poisoned and shit as well. But Locke doesn't know. At, at my point, Locke doesn't, isn't aware. Um, so this is when Jude finds out that Locke has been dating her and Taryn at the same time. Yeah, that was shit, bro. And she challenges Taryn to a duel, which, like... <laughs> I love that, though. I love it, but also, like, always the woman, the woman gets blamed. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> In an she affair. Should, <laughs> she should be chopping Locke's dick off, yeah. I know. I guess also, like, because, like, Taryn knew, like, that's the thing, Taryn knew that Locke was doing this to, like, as a test or whatever. Like, if she didn't know, then, like, fair game, but... I feel like Taryn also knows that Jude is willing to do whatever it takes to protect her and she thought maybe in that moment Jude could handle it because Jude has been able to handle it, which is really shitty, but she knows that she can hold her own and stuff, so she wasn't willing to risk this. Um, but yeah, it's just so petty and stupid. Like, do you love... And, he's, and I think he asked the same question to Jude, like, oh do you love me enough or would you love me enough to give me up or something along those lines and she was like fuck no and that's when he realized like him and Taryn are different it was like this little experiment about mortals changing like themselves yeah like, this is like the minds. thing it goes back to like they yeah play these games about like how yeah like humans feel things and stuff and it's like like I feel like there's a better way to like just have a deep conversation you know yeah <laughs> I think Maddox even says to Jude um like even for someone like him, who's a war general and all that type of stuff, and he's murdered a shit ton of people, and, like, he's not changeable either, so how could you expect that of humans as well? Yeah. Um. So, Vivi glamours them to stop dueling or whatever, um, but the glamour doesn't work on Jude on because of the thing. But I would think that because Dane's dead... Yeah, it would then, just like, disappear. That negates, yeah, all... Yeah, I don't know. What what is it actually called? Like a a geese? A geese. Geese? Because he's not living. Or maybe is this an indication of him not actually being dead? Hello? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Ay, 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 No, no, no. Because no, otherwise, <laughs> no, because otherwise this wouldn't work. What, <laughs> I know, the plan wouldn't like, work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, like that's crazy though. Yeah, Maddox, like, finds, like, Jude, like, tells Maddox everything, essentially. Um... And he's like, you can have anything you want in exchange for Cardin. So he's like dangling. They're like, I'll make you a knight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he also mentions a banquet that's being held by Belkin. And Vivi asks Jude again if she wants to move back to the human world because Vivi came for like the coronation. Um, and Jude finally figures out that Oak is Dane and Liriope's child. So he is of the Greenbrier line. I'm glad you said her name because I was never going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Locke's mum. <laughs> and um, she, um, and so she figures out that um, Maddox wants to use Oak 
as like a pawn and like rule through him because he's so young like it's funny um because oriana is maddox's wife now and like jude was telling her this plan because she you know being trained by maddox she understands his strategy and then oriana's like what the fuck (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was great it was so good because jude is so in on this yeah she's ambitious and ruthless and we love it um she later interrogates Carden and kisses him yeah no we love that love that um, and she makes a plan because it because because he they hate each other and it's like that hate kiss you know yeah hot um, so she makes a plan she's going to use cut uh, oh okay hang on <laughs> she's going to okay okay hang on I'm gonna say <laughs> the plan for everyone else is that Carden is going she's going to use Carden to crown Oak yes herself. did you see did you see the switcheroo coming though no. I did, but yes, okay. Anyway, I didn't see the switcheroo. I was just like, oh, she'll just like lead anyway. Um, and Carden swears himself to her for a year and one day. Yes, oh, th- I feel like this is very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So because she managed the- to trick him. Yes, and she lied the to day him often. because she can lie. Yeah. On the day of the banquet, Jude and Maddie jewel over the crown because of course they do, and Jude wins because she poisons the wine. Yeah. Because she is immune. <laughs> yeah, we love that. Yeah. And then the switcheroo happens and she like, I just saw she said to Oak, she's like, oh, remember like what we oh, practiced? Yeah, what we practiced. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's like, yes, I remember. Because he's like a child. It's like four years old. And then old. Oak crowns Carden. And yeah. now because he's indebted to her for a year and one day, yeah. she's like, I am queen. <laughs> Essentially, I'm queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Checkmate, uh, Maddox, you old fucking hag. You of a guy. idiot. <laughs> Moron. Nah, loved it. Power plays. Do you think she decided, I don't know. Do you think she decided she wanted that, went that approach after she was able to trick him into that bargain or? No, I think, I never think it was about Carden. I think it was about her desire to have power. And she was like, yeah, and she was like, Maddox is never going to give me what she wants. And she's like, if I give over Carden, then Maddox's just going to rule through Oak anyway. Yeah, as regent, yeah. Yeah, so I think it would just have been like, yeah, well, if I can get Carden crowned, then like. Yeah, that's fair. Because, yeah, because as we, what we know of Maddox, yeah, being the, the war general and stuff, and like war is his purpose, winning for the, for Elfheim is his purpose. And I think he even said something along the lines of like there hasn't been war in like a long time and he almost like itches and craves for it. So him being him being in power would have been very uh interesting. But yeah, in the in that meantime of before Cardin was crowned, um Jude had to make alliances with a couple of other people from separate courts and was doing like all the Hustle, all the yeah, work. and and the roach was doing fuck all, <laughs> the bomb was doing fuck all. Ghost was I like her relationship with the ghost, you know, being buddy buddies and stuff. Because I suppose they teach each other a lot. If I remember correctly, I think one of them betrays the rest. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm at a stage in book two where it's been revealed there's like a traitor amongst them, and it's now going to be a guessing game. I think I know who it is, but I could definitely be wrong. I think what I also enjoyed is early in the book, I think it's when, like, Jude talks back at Maddox or something, something about how he killed their father and ruined their life and stuff, taking him here. We, you know, we love that sentiment. Yeah, just standard stuff. <laughs> like, he said something about, I don't know, you can hate us all you want, but, like, family is where her loyalties are always going to lie or something like that. And that seems true because of, despite Oak not actually being their, like, biological half-brother, she sees him as a brother and she's doing whatever, it, obviously whatever it takes to protect him. And I just thought that was lovely. Also, I have written down, during the Carden uh, interrogation, he explains why he hates Jude, and I feel like that is very important. Firstly, which is pretty unexpected is he thinks about her a lot because <laughs> he has a big ass fucking crush on her yes yeah she does she discovers a piece of paper with her name written all over it and then like teardrops yeah yeah um he also hates he, it's kind of he has this weird jealousy between her family dynamic despite the nature of the despite the circumstance of how they ended up in Elfheim, compared to him essentially being abandoned by his parents 
and forced to live with Belkin, who, again, abuses him. But he also hates Jude because Maddox loves her despite being unfaithful and murdering <laughs> his yeah. mother and stuff. Um, and that she, she doesn't have a brother that beats her and stuff as well. So, yeah. again, kind of juvenile reasons because a lot of them are out, are not in within her control. Like, why are you going to hate Jude for her father loving her despite how, you know, yeah, they came to be? I don't know. Yeah. Weird. But, yeah, it, it humanizes Cardin a little bit as well in a way. Makes us feel a little bit sorry for him. Yes. Yes, it does. And, yeah, Jude is walking in with him being crowned because he's going to f- – he thinks – she thinks he's going to find it miserable so that he can lean on her a little bit more as well. Um but of course, we find out in book two all the all the things. So we'll wait for that. But yeah, no, I love Jude. Taryn's all right. Taryn's just stuck yeah. in the housewife. Taryn, <laughs> yeah, just feels like uh, like a, a character just used to progress the plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah, to antagonize Jude in a way. But they do have a lovely, loyal friend friendship to each other as well. And then Vivian's just like in and out. She just hates Maddock. She just hates yeah. the fairy world. She's like, all right, I'm a dip. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dip. I'm going to be with Heather. And they're going to look after Oak. But yeah, I loved the, the just the political power play and power struggle as well. It was so good. Enjoy- like, I didn't want to put it down in that moment. Also, just, yeah, really enjoyed Cardin begging for his life. Because the tables have turned. Because Jude was very f- much unhinged. And, like, I reckon she could have killed him. Just out of spite. But yeah, a year and a day. What do I feel? The, the, a day feels so specific, and I feel like it's going to be so important in the second book. <laughs> and like, yeah, I don't, like, I think okay. you're just going to be mad. <laughs> We're going to be mad. It's going to yeah. be lackluster. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's uh, pretty much the book. Um, oh, I haven't done my my stars. My oh, stars that okay. listen. It's okay. I'm my- like try and bullshit my way a little bit further while you do that (laughs) there are other courts and stuff in this book of course uh there's like court of termites there's like seely and unseely courts everyone has to pledge their allegiance to the high king and since belkin from uh was in the process of i guess becoming high king people were refusing to to pledge to him which was which is causing yeah more further political intrigue and power struggles um, Cardin being king now, um, I think that there's a new, there, in the next book, I think begins a new process, process of a pledge of allegiance, which we will see, I think. And yes, yeah, so Jude also has her, a personal allegiance to Lord Roy, Royben and Lord Severin of like a, some quarter termites and like a, an unseely court or whatever. It's just all different species of phase, but of course, if you're listening, you know what I'm on about. I also really loved the dialogue language between all the characters. It really did seem fantastical in that sense, not just modern day language. And I did love that it didn't, there was no swearing like at all, mostly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there was no swearing at all, actually. But it, yeah, so refreshing. So clever. It was very, some of the, especially Fey language, it was very like poetic in a way. All right, I have my reviews. It was very impressive. Wonderful. Now we are crossing over to the stars that listen. A segment where we segment where we read a one star review and a good and a five star review from Goodreads. Would you like me to list to talk? Sure. Okay, my one star review. Three hundred and eighty four pages, zero substance substance. Unless you call pages littered with problematic shit substance. I don't get it. I just don't fucking get it. Before, this book is my first experience with Holly Black. It'll either make or break our future relationship. After, any plans for a potential future relationship is hereby terminated. Over, done with, null and void. Cancelled, you get the point. (laughs) Jesus Christ. I think, sorry, before you go, I think a lot of the bad reviews are people that came from, like, TikTok and stuff and, yeah, were expecting, like, a typical, like, new adult fantasy smut book. I reckon. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like... If you want to compare it to Akatar in a way, because yeah, this was compared to Akatar a lot. I suppose in a way, Akatar was YA in that sense as well. But YA, not YA, Akatar still has some weirdly like problematic issues in their book as well, but no one's slamming it as hard as The Cool Prince. Anyway, all right, my one star review. 
I low-key hate my friend for telling me to read this book. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I much more prefer SJM take on fairies. Lol. Should I even bother with the second book? I heard a lot of reviewers say saying it gets better. But like, honestly, I don't even know the main character's name and I just finished the book. So... <laughs> Yeah, see, they've come from Sarah J. Mass, who's new adult smart, expecting like that same take on fairies, like. Or well, even though Akata, I feel like the first three books were very like YA ish, that it had a lot more adventurous appeal to it, I yeah. suppose. And then coming over to this, yeah. Yeah. All right, my five star is I require book two immediately. Holly is the fairy queen. <laughs> Love that. Woo. Mine is power hungry women are my most sacred religion. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Jude, go off my queen. Ugh. Love her. Fantastic. Carden, eh, you're a douche for now. Yeah, we'll see. You just have a big ass crush. But yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that his tail was going to be mentioned early on. I thought it was going to be like a later revelation thing. Also, quickly, because Oak is starting to develop some horns, right? Surely that wasn't going to be indication enough of his relation to the Greenbrier line. Um, well, I, th- I don't think so, because I think a lot of them have all, like, Just in general? Like, yeah, okay. Just in general. All right, yeah, that's fair. But, yeah, that concludes The Cruel Prince and concludes this episode of Letterbox Book Club. As always, thank you for listening. You will find us on Instagram at letterbox underscore book underscore club, and from there you will find our link tree is in our bio, which will take you to everywhere else where we are. <laughs> wonderful (laughs) thanks everyone so check out next week for the next book um the wicked king we are following along this adventure intriguing very intriguing will Cardin hold his place as king who knows the cover the (laughs) yeah the cover itself is sussy because of it being in water anyway Alrighty. yeah thanks for listening see you next week Bye bye bye